for the gold. I think that's something right now, especially following the Olympics, just a few weeks out that we can kind of understand going for the gold, trying to win. I think most people would prefer to win rather than lose. I think whether it's a sports kind of uh, idea, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, I think most of us like to win, especially if we have any kind of athletic background at all. Now think for a minute, when is an athlete like a judge? When is an athlete like a judge? When he's sitting the bench. <laughs> Dad, right there. That's the way it works. But I think whenever it comes to like the Christian life, the Christian walk following Jesus, we want to win at the Christian life as well. But sometimes as believers, as disciples, as Christians, we tend to sit the bench too. If, if it was just kind of being at home, we might call that being like a couch potato. Well, the couch potato version of a Christian is being a pew sitter. A pew sitter. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you just a pew sitter? Are you just a pew sitter? What, what does a pew sitter look like? Well, a pew sitter would be somebody who the only Bible they get all week long is what happens inside this room. The only Bible you get all week long is at church on Sunday morning. A pew sitter is someone when they pray, if they pray, maybe it's just for their meals and they don't pray for anything else. Or when they pray, it's just about the wants, it's just about the needs, it's just the genie in the bottle. So a pew sitter, the only Bible is in this room. The only time they pray is at meals and the only thing they pray for is wants and needs. Or a pew sitter is someone that the name of Jesus rarely comes out of their mouth. Rarely comes out of their mouth. Now my guess is you don't want to be a pew sitter. If you're a follower of Jesus, you should not want to be a pew sitter. You should want to be in the game. You should want to get your head into the game. Back in the day, the high school musical show, you had the star athlete, Troy Bolton, meets this girl during the summer. The girl goes to a different school, then they end up going to the same school. And he is kind of torn because he wants to be with a girl, but he also is the star basketball player. The basketball team has a chance at winning the state title. His dad is the basketball coach, but he wants the girl and he starts the theater and he's torn all through it. And just like any Disney movie, they break out into the spontaneous song, right? And they say, you got to get your head in the game. Today, our subject is going to be, how can we be like Troy Bolton? How can we be like Troy Bolton? I'm just kidding. I know that there are only one person in this room that wants to be like Troy Bolton, Mr. Breyer over there. He's like the only one because most of us have aspirations beyond that. So here's our question. How can we get our head in the game? How can we get our head in the Christian game? In the disciple game, in the disciple making game, in the kingdom game. How do we get ourselves in the gospel game? Because if you're a follower of Jesus, that's what you should want to be doing. In the letter to the Corinthians, Paul is answering a lot of questions. And as he gets to kind of chapter 9, he really has to start to defend himself in what he is doing. As we go through chapter 9, verses 1 through 10, he has, he's defending his identity as an apostle. His identity as an apostle. And we think, well, what is an apostle? Like, an apostle, an apostle is a messenger with authority. A messenger with authority. An apostle is someone who goes out and builds stuff. And that's exactly what Paul is doing, right? You know, Paul is a messenger with the authority of God, with the scriptures, Going out to build what? He's building people. He's building disciples. 
and he's building churches. Now, Paul is an interesting character, okay? And I think a lot of times when we think about Jesus, like we even say with Jesus, Paul, we have this soft kind of presentation thought when it comes to Jesus and even Paul. But, but Paul was way different. Scott, come here. Okay. Now, now when, when you think of like the Apostle Paul, okay, now Paul was half Jewish, half Roman. Half Jewish, half Roman. And he was trained in the ways to be like a Pharisee. He knew the Old Testament well. He knew God well. But on the Roman side, Paul also was part of Roman militia. Roman militia. What he did before he met Jesus is he would go out, gather people who were followers of Jesus, and execute and kill them. Paul was a bad dude until he met Jesus. Now, Scott, do you remember the first time we met? Yes. Where was it? Oh, I don't remember that. Dude. <laughs> no, we were at the school. Were we? Where, where at the school? Yeah, it was wrestling. Wrestling room. First time I met Scott was in the wrestling room. Now, back in the day, he was a very good wrestler. Probably still could be a good wrestler today. Looking at the man, right? Now, first time we met, okay, he picked me up and he slammed me. It was like a spine buster. You did. You did. I mean, it was pretty bad. Now, the cool thing is he's like, oh, no. And he helped me get up afterwards. Now, this guy is very similar to the Apostle Paul. Here's how. Paul could kick your butt and then tell you about Jesus after he helped you up. Amen. Right? Scott can kick your butt and then tell you about Jesus after he picks you up. So from now on, when you think about the Apostle Paul, think about Scott, Scott Starbucks, okay? He is your new picture of the Apostle Paul because that's the kind of guy he is now. You get a prize. Did you know you get a prize for participating? I, I did. You did. <laughs> Gaither vocal <laughs> They actually wanted me to be the sixth member. Oh, yeah! You said, no. you said no. Story for a different day. Story for a different day. <laughs> now, Paul, as he's defending his identity, his rights as an apostle, his restraint as an apostle, then his freedom as an apostle, because all of them are just going crazy, then he gets to verse 23. He says this. I do all this, everything that he does, his entire life is for the sake of the gospel. Now, when we think about gospel in this room, here's what we think about. We think about Jesus dying on the cross for our sins, like the Bible said he was going to do. He was buried. Why was he buried? To prove that he was dead. He rose on the third day, like the Bible said he was going to do. He was seen. Why was he seen? To prove that he was alive. He ascended to heaven. He sat down as king of the universe. And one day he is coming back. And if we want to go to heaven when we die, we have to believe in the gospel. Now, whenever we read the scriptures, that is part of what we talk about. Specifically, the gospel by which we are saved. But for Paul, it's also the gospel that we share. The gospel that we share. Here, what Paul is saying, I do all things for the sake of the spread or the sharing of the gospel. That's his focus in life. That I may, now this is cool, share. Some of your translations might say the word partake. The Greek, su, coin, omas. Now this is crazy, okay? Like partaker is kind of a, a good word for that. But it's this idea of someone joining, joining in a community for a specific purpose. Someone joining in a community for a specific purpose. Purpose. A better translation in the PJB and the Pastor Joel version, we would use the word player. Player. Here's what Paul is saying. Paul wants to be a player in the gospel game. Paul wants to be a player in the gospel game. What does it look like? Verse 24. It says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? No takers. You're underlining the word run. Run is the key word for today. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, 
but one receives the prize. Everybody's running, but there's only one winner. So when you run, run in a such a way that you may win. Now, the people of Corinth, the people in this area, were very understanding of sports. Like, they would have been a very strong fan base. Two big events happened like every four years. One was the Olympics, right? We all know the Olympics. The other one was the Asmenian Games, which happened just a short distance from Corinth. They happened every two years. So Corinth would have been like a suburb of where some very important games happened. Most of the people Paul is writing to understands sports. So Paul goes, okay, when you run, you need to run to win. Now, what is he not saying? Run, don't walk. Okay, run, don't walk. Run, don't power walk. You know, so you're not doing this. <laughs> don't power walk. He's saying don't do that. Run, don't fall behind because you're focused on winning, all right? Run, don't jog. Run, don't jog. Picture the people who, like, who jog on a regular basis. They jog outside. You see them? And I remember like when I jog, sometimes I'm thinking about like the to-do list. I might be praying. I might be thinking of what's got to go on. You know, I don't know. Some people probably think like the grocery list. You know, rarely when you are jogging are you thinking about winning. You're really not focusing on the run. You're focused on something else. Paul goes, ah, uh -uh. don't focus on something else. Focus on the run. Run, don't just sit in a pew or a chair. Run, don't just sit in a pew or a chair. If you're going to run the gospel game, be a player in the gospel game, you've got to run to win. Don't just sit in the chair, get up and share. Don't just sit in a chair, get up and share the gospel. Verse 24, he says this, run in such a way that you may win. Win. He actually expects them to want to win. My guess is that you want to win most things you do. There's two weird qualities that are, can be both good and bad that Kendra and I pass on to our kids. One of them is we both are very competitive. We both like to win. This is actually like why we don't play like co-ed sports. It gets bad because if I was the cause for us to lose, I would get chewed out for losing. Right. This is also the same reason we don't invite people over to watch Texas A&M play football with us. You get some wild moments because we both like to win. We're both very competitive. All three of our kids are very competitive. Now, there's something else that we kind of have part of us that we can pass on, and it's this idea or this character trait as part of the DNA is being a redhead. Being a redhead. Now, if you're not familiar with this, like, Redheads are like 25% more on everything. Like when they love, it's 25% more. When they're happy, it's 25% more. When they're sad, it's 25% more. When they are angry, it is 25% more. When they are competitive, it is 25% more. Now, here's the crazy thing. Kendra's a redhead. My mama is a redhead. So the redhead gene exists in me. And we passed it on to Jace. To Jace. And this has been <laughs> evident like all of his life. This is Jace when he was three. He was three. Now you can't see it here. He's actually in a wrestling stance. Because the boy started wrestling when he was three as far as practicing, okay? Now you must might think, oh, that's so cute. It didn't leave. This is him today. He's still there. Like it has not changed at all. He is focused. Paul says, when you are competing, running, living the Christian life in the gospel game, play to win. Focus on winning. Verse 25. Everyone who competes, I don't know what some of your translations, this word competes comes from the Greek word agonizomai. What does that sound like? Agony. Agony. He's actually saying running this race is going to cause pain. It's going to cause pain in the games. 
goes into strict training. Here's the thing. Getting your head in the game hurts. Getting your game, getting your head in the game hurts. When you are living the Christian life, you're going to have to say no to stuff. And in the beginning, when you say no to stuff, it might hurt. When you are out in the world and you're representing Jesus, you might get rejected. That's going to hurt. You might feel let down whenever you don't feel God's with you sometimes. That's going to to hurt. But Paul is going, if you're going to be a player in the gospel game, expect to hurt because you are going to have to sacrifice. And the sacrifice is going to hurt. In the world we live in, sacrifice hurts. You know what might hurt more? Stupid. Stupid. Who has seen this TikTok thing that's going on for like a year and a half called like the Milk Crate Challenge? The Milk Crate Challenge where these people are stacking up milk crates, and the idea is that you're going to walk up and walk down. Walk up and walk down. Now, do you know what happens when they get like halfway through? Like they start falling, like this happens. Ah! Or this. Ah! I mean, there's some of them go off head first. Like, that's just stupid. But do you know what? My guess is, as they are kind of prepping for it, they're stacking up the crates. I don't think anybody who's like, I want to try this. I don't think they expect to fall. I think they actually believe they're going to make it over. I think they're going to believe they're going to win. They don't expect to hurt. Paul says, if you're going to be a player in the gospel game, expect to hurt. Expect to hurt. You have to train them. You have to train. What does it mean to train? When you think about it as training for anything, like you might have to train your body from a physical standpoint. Maybe that's eating certain things or not eating certain things. Maybe it's going and working out. You might have to get your mind right because a big part of sports is just mental toughness. You know, maybe it's your spirit. You have to get your soul ready because whenever you're doing stuff, you may not have a cheerleader. And we live in a week society when it comes to our emotions and our feelings and sometimes you have to be your biggest cheerleader sometimes you have to be the one to encourage yourself internally as you lean on the power of god we don't do a good job of this so when you are thinking about being a player in the gospel game you have to get your physical right because our body is the temple of the holy spirit you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you have to rely on the power of the Spirit. You have to train. You have to do more than just get Bible on Sunday morning. You have to pray more than just your wants and your needs. Jesus has to come out of your mouth often if you're a follower of Jesus. That's the way this works. Verse 25. They do it, talking about the normal athletes, they do it to get a crown that will not last. And he's talking about the crowns the victors would get in the Olympics or the Athenian Games. You know, they're going to get there and flowers are going to die, right? How many of you cannot keep a garden or buy a pot? I can't do it at all. Like every time we do it, they just die. Flowers die. That's what he's saying. Don't do it for that. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. And maybe he's talking about one of the crowns that's mentioned in the New Testament. Maybe he's talking about rewards. Or maybe he's just talking about salvation. Maybe he's just talking about when we die, we get to go to heaven, and we get to spend eternity with Jesus. I think that's probably closer to it. Verse 26. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I'm not jogging with nothing on my mind. Like, I'm not running, not trying to win. I'm not looking at squirrels. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. I love the fact that Paul uses the term for himself like a boxer. Like, that just totally fits. It totally fits the Apostle Paul. But he's going, look, I'm just not doing nothing. I'm just not doing this stuff for nothing. The motion matters. The motion matters. Don't just go through the motions Make the motions count. Don't just go through the motions. Make the most of the motions. Make the most of your Christian life. 
You know, you have it. We have it way better than other countries in the world. Amen. We have the freedom to come to church, to follow Jesus, to grow in our faith. And America has taken that for granted big time. Yes, sir. Big time. Amer the American church is weak. Don't be part of the weak American church. Be better than that. Be in the gospel game. That's what he expects. And if you are a follower of Jesus, you should want to do that. Let's go back to verse 26. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. Okay? So, so there's a little phrase. I don't know if boxer uses it. I know some wrestlers do it. But whenever they like talk about like boxing, they go, okay, next time you're going to get these hands. I love the fact that Paul is going, somebody's going to get these gospel hands. But here's the bad part. Who's going to get the hands? Verse 27. He says, No, I strike a blow to my body. I strike a blow to my body. That phrase, a blow to my body, literally says to hit someone under the eye. It is the description of giving someone a black eye. Paul says, somebody's going to get these hands. Somebody's going to get a black eye. Who's he giving the black eye to? Himself. Himself. And make it my slave, or I like the translation, keep it under control. He's keeping his body under control. Why? He understood that the main thing getting in his way to being a player in the gospel game was himself. He was his own worst enemy and he knew it. He goes, therefore, I fight the battle within myself and I win to keep my body under control. Whether that's through my thoughts, whether it's my mouth, whether it's my actions, whether it's my habits, whether it's my intentions, whether it's my spiritual workout. Think about that spiritual workout. You have a spiritual workout you go through on a regular basis. You should. You should. And that's what Paul says, I have mastered the spiritual workout so that after I have preached to others, I myself should not be disqualified. After I have preached, I will not be disqualified from what? Being a player in the gospel game. This word disqualified, it was actually used of those games that happened close to Corinth. You know, whenever you would say, okay, I'm going to participate in the games. You would have to sign up and then train for 10 months before the games. You train for 10 months and then at the end of the 10 months, before the games start, you had to go and go through a physical test. And if you did not pass the physical test, you could not compete in the games. Paul is going, as I train myself to be a player in the gospel game, I do not want at the end, at the end of my training period, at the end of the 10 months back in their head, I don't want to be disqualified. I want to be able to share the gospel. I want to be able to represent the gospel well. But here's the thing. There's no prize in the pew. There's no prize in the pew. If you're just a pew sitter, there's no Bible outside in here. Your prayer life is just wants and needs or just at meals. And Jesus never comes out of your mouth. You are just a few sitter. And there's no prize in you. You want to be a player in the gospel game. How? How? Know the basics. Know the basics. Know the basics of the gospel. Know the basics of prayer. Know the basics of sharing with people about Jesus. Know the goal to build up the kingdom of God. It's really not that hard to build up the kingdom of God and then make the sacrifice. Make the sacrifice to train yourself spiritually. Here's how I want you to start. This week, I want you to come up with your own personal Definition of the gospel. Your own personal definition of the gospel. I say it every week. 
It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5. That's my paraphrase is what I say. Come up with your own personal definition of the gospel and post it on social media. Post it on social media. Or if you don't have social media, write a note, get a sticky note. Man, if you could get the gospel on a sticky note, I'll give you a high five. I mean, so write the gospel on a sticky note, give it to somebody. Write it on social media and post it with the hashtag the gospel. Or I'll even give you a way out. Sometime this week, I will post mine on Facebook. The thing I say every week, share it. Just share it. Because you want to be a player in the gospel game. You just don't want to be a pew center. But to be a player in the gospel game, you have to train. You have to talk. You have to sacrifice and be ready for the agony and the pain that is to come because Paul and Jesus said it was going to come. Glenn Cunningham, big runner, like in the 19s, 20s, and 30s, silver medalist in the Olympics, actually ran for KU. So he was a KU grade. So this is a Kansas boy. Now, probably best known for being one of the first people to run a mile and it recorded in under four minutes. So he was a fast guy. But he didn't always start that way. When he was eight years old, his brother, they were getting ready to kind of get the heat the house. His brother filled their kerosene heater up with gasoline. And whenever they lit the heater, it blew up. It killed his brother. And it burned all the flesh from his knees to his toes on both legs. They wanted to amputate both legs. But his parents said no. He actually said no. He did not want to go through it at age eight. He did not walk again for two years. Two years. He didn't start jogging or doing anything like that until he was 13 and 14. And he said whenever he started like training, his, the skin on his legs would just start to bleed and to tear. It took forever for him to overcome the wounds that he had. But he knew that he needed to keep going. He had a life first that he thought about. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall run and not be weary. When he would prep for a run, he would repeat this verse over and over again over again. And it was the comfort that he had knowing that Jesus loved him that kept him motivated to keep going. When you're out in the world and you really wonder where your identity is, when you wonder where your purpose is, when you wonder about what you're supposed to be doing with your life, you are supposed to be a player in the gospel game if you've believed in Jesus, that he died for you, that he was buried, that he rose, that he was seen, that he ascended to heaven, and one day he is coming back. If your forgiveness and salvation is based on your personal relationship with Jesus, you want to be a player in the gospel game. And as you go through it, you know the pain will come. You know you're going to have to train you know you're going to have to sacrifice, but also you can run and not grow weary because Jesus loves you and he died for you. And if you lean on him, he'll get you through it. Let's pray. Father, we pray. As you thunder and rumble above us, we hear the presence of the Lord and we say amen. We pray that you help us become focused have the desire in our hearts and our souls and our spirits to want to be a player in the game of the kingdom, in the game of Jesus, in the game of the gospel. Let us not just sit in a chair. Let us get out and share. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.